Hi everybody, I'm Eli Aguilar. Welcome back to Decoding Yoga, where we talk about your doubts, those questions that you may have about yoga, and we find a way to unravel them for you. Because we have had a lot of questions, comments um, about our yoga philosophy series that we had a few episodes ago with Deepak, where we were talking about uh, how yoga is a method, it's actually a system when we can aim to become the better human being that we can be, um, we have decided to actually break it down a little bit more for all of us to understand not only what are these steps or these um, actions that we should take in our, in our life to practice yoga in the real sense of practicing yoga and Deepak mentioned that one of them one of these eight limbs of the yoga system is called yamas and we have five yamas in this uh, limb so I invited Deepak again to now narrow down to understand how we can apply this to our daily life so welcome back Deepak, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your teachings because thanks to those teachings back then people got really excited because again I'm not surprised honestly that people thought that yoga was about postures and now we have learned that it's more than that. So welcome and thank you so much for taking this invitation. Thank you, Eli. So let's uh, talk about uh, some uh, one of the most important uh, yamas. Hmm. So the most important yama or the code of conduct which Patanjali has given as a formula is not a suggestion, it's not his opinion, it's a formula. Hmm. You must follow if you want to uh, spiritually evolve your consciousness and that is called ahimsa. Hmm. Uh, or non-violence even Buddha you know Buddha one of the key word Buddha gave hmm. was Karuna compassion okay and compassion Buddha actually said ahimso ahimsa paramo dharma he said that non-violence is the biggest virtue hmm. Buddha says the same thing Patanjali says the same thing hmm. I'm not sure if Jesus said that God is love mm -hmm. and love is God. Correct. Or somebody said it, right? Correct. So that we have to love exactly each other as we love Him. Right. Yeah. So Patanjali says that when you start your journey towards yourself, towards finding yourself, the first rule, rule number one, mm. is non-violence. Mm -hmm. Right. So. As I mentioned, I always used to, uh, I always like the metaphor of the world travel. In the Western world, when people say travel, hmm. travel means exploring the external world, going to different countries, different societies, or maybe going to different planets and galaxies now. Hmm. In yoga, in India, or India and that this side of the world, hmm. travel means traveling inwards. Hmm. So when a Western person says, I'm going on travel, hmm. they mean that they are going on some kind of traveling, exploration, vacation, some different country, Outside. culture. Mm -hmm. In India, when we say we are going on travel, we mean pilgrimages. Pilgrimages, okay. the holy temples, big temples, it can be some mountain, whatever. Hmm. They are the symbol. They are the symbol of going inwards. Hmm. So when we go, when we go, or when, when like Muslims, when they go on, uh, when they go to Kaaba, Hmm. It's called, they call it Yatra. Yatra means travel. When they go to Hajj, hmm. they, when they go to Makkah, they say they are going on travel. Hmm. Right? But it's an internal journey. It's an internal journey. Hmm. So, so traveling to pilgrimages is the very uh, metaphorical travel. Hmm. Those who cannot travel in word, at least they can travel to the physical symbols. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Make the effort to go and at least in, do the, in the way. Yeah, at least do the physical part. At least go to a temple or mosque or a church or hmm. whatever you think is the symbol for you. Now, so because we are going, going to travel inwards, the first thing has to be in the non-violence. Hmm. Now, let's take the example of traveling outwards. Let's say you bought a car. Hmm. Now, you have to drive the car in the city. Hmm. What is the most important thing you have to keep in mind? What you must not end up doing? Not end up doing. 
with your car? Not run out of gas. <laughs> Um, I don't know. What can put you in jail? What can put you in trouble? You know. Oh, just I don't know. Don't don't follow the traffic. No, you don't want to hit somebody with your car, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, you don't want to kill everything, anybody with your car. Yeah, you can get a ticket, parking ticket. All those things are okay. Hmm. But the most important thing is you don't want to hit anybody. To hit anybody. Yeah, true. It, to hit anybody's vehicle. Yeah. So basically, you don't want to be. In, in trouble with your car and put somebody ex- else in trouble with exactly your car, so basically. intentionally or unintentionally you Correct. don't want to be violent to somebody you don't want Correct. to kill them hit them not only with ex- a car injure, with injure them right at any time yeah. exactly so just the way that's the rule number one hmm. the moment you take your car out to hmm. explore the outer world you want to make sure that you're not hitting somebody hmm. in the same way. And that's a rule. It's not a choice. Correct. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. Correct. But you blindly follow it, right? Hmm. You want to make sure that you don't accident, meet Correct. an accident. Correct. In the same way, when it comes to the spirituality, people hmm. often think it's a choice. Hmm. People think because it's, it looks metaphorical, hmm. being non-violent is a choice hmm. or not harming animal is a choice. Hmm. I will do it when I feel like it. Hmm. No, it's just like traffic rules. So that's why Patanjali calls it a formula and he gives you as a formula. Hmm. That the moment you are wanting to step into the internal world, hmm. rule number one, you have to be non-violent hmm. and fake it until you make it. <laughs> Don't hurt anybody, anything, or yourself. Basically. Exactly. So non-violence is the most important principle. Is the bedrock of yoga because the most fundamental uh, aim of yoga. What does yoga say that that when you achieve that union hmm. of yourself with the supreme self or your own consciousness with your own supreme consciousness, you find that you are one with everyone. Hmm. So you. You find, exactly. you, you discover yeah. that you are one with everyone. Hmm. So today, if you haven't discovered it, it doesn't mean that you are not one with everyone. Hmm. It's just that you haven't discovered it. So you think that you are separate from others. Hmm. But those who have achieved it, they know that you are one with everybody and everyone is one with you. Correct. So how can you harm others? Hmm. How You're can harming you, yourself. How, exactly. Hmm. How can you exploit others? How can you uh, use others? Hmm. So whether you know it or not, you have to start to follow from the day one the non-violence and hmm. that becomes the bedrock of yoga practice and as i mentioned earlier fake it until you make it Correct. so remember just like following the traffic rule hmm. externally is not a choice hmm. you have to do it it's not a suggestion in the same way following the yamas following the most important yama which is non-violence is not a choice if hmm. you really want to be a yogi this is where you start. Where you start, and I, and as you said, because it's the it's the bedrock of this lifestyle. Even if you don't practice anything else, even if you cannot touch your toes exactly. when you're going down, or you don't practice any of the other yoga techniques, just start with practicing being good to yourself, good to others, and this is something that I. Uh, in the yoga teacher training courses we teach in Sampurna, I'm the anatomy teacher. And, and of course, I have to work, uh, talk a lot about the physical part. But I always, always talk about this. It doesn't matter what happens on the mat when you're practicing postures. It doesn't matter how many minutes you meditate every day. It doesn't matter how many yoga uh, uh, breathing techniques you practice. If we don't start by practicing ahimsa we haven't started with the right foot. Exactly. This is what we have to practice. And more importantly, and as you said, this is not an option. It means that we are called to be compassionate to ourselves and to others, whether we're seen or not. Because it's very easy to be kind and loving when everybody's watching. But when nobody's watching, when you are in the privacy and the intimacy of you with yourself, what is it that you do, that you think, that you create in your heart becomes your thoughts, your words to you and to others? Because if you want to call yourself a a true yogi, it starts with this intimacy of being compassionate and loving. So... 
um, thank you so much for bringing this up to us because just try to live one day, just one day with compassion and love for everything, everyone is starting for yourself is not an easy chore to do. Right. So thank you so much for going into the first yama. Next week, we will come with the second yama, the second principle that helps us to relate to others, to communicate with others, the social uh, behavior that as yoga practitioners, as seekers of this uh, path, the spiritual path we should follow. So thank you so much, Deepak. I will uh, hear you back here next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elif, for inviting me. Thank, thank you, everybody, you. for being with us. Um, and namaste. Namaste.